All right, all right. Let's take a look at another, I guess, lesson based on ideal gas law. And this is ideal gas equation. But isn't the gas ideal gas equation PV equals nRT? Yeah, it is. It is. But do you know, of course, that you can manipulate this to find other things? Other things such as density. Wow, you can relate density to this? Of course you can. Everything has a density, all matter has a density, including gas. You know, how much can, how much gas by mass can take up a certain space? I mean, different gas is different, right? They have different molar mass. Obviously they occupy a different volume, that's for sure. Now let's take a look at how we can relate this to this. By first, let me ask you, what is the unit? How do you calculate density? Well, density is mass over volume. Okay, what that is, of course, is grams over, let's say liters. Usually a lot of people use milliliter. The reason why they use milliliter or they call it what centimeter cube is because the density of water is one grams per milliliter. So uh, people use milliliters a lot, but today I'm gonna use liters. Still, still density, still density. Can we manipulate this equation in a way that it solves for grams over liters? So what that means is that can I take the ideal gas equation Move those variable around where I get mass over liter or solve for mass over liter. Well, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's change up the ideal gas law to look like this. N over V is equal to uh, P over RT. Okay. So I isolated N over V on the left side. Now you may be thinking, oh, this is not density. It's close, it's close to density. I mean, this, this, this is a unit of quantity, but it's not. Well, this is mole. Can I turn moles to mass? Absolutely. How do I turn moles to mass? By multiplying moles by molar mass, right? What that means is that if I were to take this and I multiply by, let's say, molar mass, that's big M over V, isn't this density? Because mole times molar mass will be mass. Mass over volume is density. Now, I, I can't just introduce a variable like this without introducing the same thing to the other side. I mean, that's what, that will certainly break the laws of mathematics. So I need to put M here as well. Okay, because if you were to move this down here, M over M is one. So I, I really didn't do anything to this equation. All I did was really took this equation and multiplying it by one. But obviously I didn't multiply it by one, I multiplied it by M over M. Okay, so I can rewrite this equation to be D is equal to PM over RT. Wow, wow, look at that, looking so nice. Okay, so the density here is equal to PM over RT, M of course being the molar mass of the ideal gas. Hey, let's do some questions. I have some questions, very nice questions too. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, do, let's do this one. Let's do this one. Uh, find the molar mass or molecular weight for the following substance. Something that has 22 degrees Celsius, 103 kPa, and has a density of 1.34 grams per liter. Now make sure when you're doing these kind of questions that the density is given to you in grams per liter. If the density is given to you in grams per milliliter, you're gonna have to change that to liters or else it's not gonna work. So we saw that in our last 
What we saw earlier is that D is equal to PM over RT. So in this case, we're, we're looking for M, right? We're looking for molar mass. So that is DRT over P. All we have to do here, of course, is sub in all the necessary information. So that would be 1.34 times R. Okay, we're looking at KPA right here. So uh, R will be... 8.31 times, oh, don't, don't sub that in there. Make sure you uh, turn that into Kelvin. So that would be 295. All that divided by 103 will give you the molar mass for this gas, whatever it may be. Let me just quickly calculate that. 1.34 times 8.31 times 295, divide that by 103. Okay, and the answer is, of course, 31.9 grams per mole. Whatever this is, okay, looks like fluorine gas. I, I, I don't know. Does it? I, I, it's hard to say. All right, so that's how you would use this equation. I mean, there's a lot of things, if you think about it, there's a lot of things you can do with, uh, with this equation. Because you're looking at molar mass calculation. You're looking at molar mass calculation here. So you can definitely do one of these questions. One of these questions. So let's do this one. This one's a nice, 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 great 11 question, you know? So a compound is 30.5% nitrogen and 69.5% oxygen. Oh, that's nice. It has a density at 91 degrees Celsius, 200 kPa is 6.13 grams per liter. Uh, what is this molecular formula? Wow. This question has stuff that we've learned in the past. What is the molecular formula? Well, to calculate molecular formula, I need impure, I need a couple of things. I need a couple of things. I need, uh, I need empirical formula. I don't know what that is. And I need molar mass. And I don't know what that is. But can I find out what that is? Absolutely I can. How? Well, this information is right here. And this information is right there. Let's do that. Let's do that. This is actually a very good review if you think about it. So let's find the empirical formula. Let's, let's refresh those memories of ours. So 30.5% is nitrogen. Let's say it's 35 grams is nitrogen. And oxygen is 69.5%. Let's just say 69.5 grams. So let's... Turn them into moles. Wow, these things bring back great memories, doesn't it? Okay, so nitrogen is 30.5 divided by 14. So you're looking at 2.18 mole. Oxygen, 69.5 divided by 16. And you're looking at 4.34 mole. Now you want to look at the ratio of the two. So you're going to apply more ratio. To do that, you divide both of these by the lower mole. So here you go. Okay, that way you can set this as 1. And this is definitely 2 because it is roundable to 2. So together, the empirical formula here is NO2. There you go. Now... I'm going to do molar mass calculation with my brand new equation that I just learned, DRT uh, over P. Okay, so, uh, hey, let's, let, let's, let's go, let's go. So the density here is 6.13. Again, make sure you remember that this, it is in grams per liters and not milliliters. Um, KPA again, so 8.31, and the temperature here is 91 plus 273, so that is 364 Kelvin. All that over 200 is 
So 6.13 times 8.31 times 364 uh, equal divided by 200, and you're looking at a molar mass of 92. Okay? Yeah, 92. Let's, let's just round it to your nearest ones. All right, so we, we have the molar mass. We have the empirical formula. Molecular formula is really just finding n. If you remember, n is equal to molecular weight over empirical weight. So the molecular weight is 92. The empirical weight right here, the empirical is 14, 16, 16. So you're looking at 646. Okay. 46. So 92 divided by 46 is 2. So you're going to multiply 2 by this empirical formula. So your final answer is N2O4, dinitrogen tetraoxide. Wow. Brings back great memories, doesn't it? Not just that, but a very good review question. Speaking about review question, I, I have another one. I have another one. Let's, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at question one, because I think it's a nice question. Remember that, you know, there's something called changes in ideal gas equation, you know, and a gas variable that we've seen before, where we have P1V1 over N1T1 is equal to P2V2 over N2T2. Well, what is, can density play a role here? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you can have D1, uh, R1, T1, P1, okay, is equal to D2, oh, did I, did I just say R1? Wow, what a big mistake. I've never heard of R1 in my life. D2, R, T2, P2. All right. Based of off of, of course, this. Based off of this. Because if you isolate everybody on one side, that would be DRT over PM. So DRT over PM. I guess I put M here just for the sake of having M there. And obviously there's no such thing as M1 and M2 because molar mass is a constant. Right? So, hey making this formula looks a little nicer because right now it looks definitely ugly. Let's get rid of those R's, let's get rid of M, and let's rewrite this to be D1T1 over P1 is equal to D2T2 over P2. What a nice formula. Okay, and let's apply this formula to question one to find out exactly what the density is if I were to change the temperature and change the, the pressure. I almost forgot what that was. So let's take a look at this. And I have something right here that I want to explain. What is STP? It's actually very simple. All right, so you have 22.4 liters of sulfur dioxide gas that weighs 64 gram at STP. STP means standard temperature and pressure. What that is, is zero degrees Celsius and at one atmospheric pressure. That's what STP means, okay? You're gonna come across SATP later on, and what that is, is one atmosphere pressure, but 25 degrees Celsius. So you're looking at room temperature, but when it comes to STP, that is zero degrees Celsius and one atmospheric pressure. Now, I want to know what the density may be if I were to change the, the, uh, the, the temperature to 20 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to increase the temperature here from 0 to 20. And I'm going to change uh, the pressure. Now, maybe it's a good idea not to use one atmosphere because this is indeed in KPA. So I, I might want to change one atmosphere to KPA because that would be an easy thing to do. Uh, we all know the conversion factor, right? One atmosphere is really uh, 101 KPA. 
Some people just say 100, but you know, 100 of 1.325 is actually the real value. But hey, I don't think it matters much. So let's use 101 KPA. So there's your STP. Hey, let's, let's do this question. Let me erase all of that. I would need some space here. Okay, so I want to know what is the new density. So I need to know what is the initial density. And you may be thinking, am I given initial density? Absolutely you are. You were given 64 grams and you're given 22.4 liters. Isn't that density? Of course it is. So there's your D1. T1 will be uh, zero degrees Celsius. So that is 273 Kelvin. And all that over 101 kilopascal worth of pressure is equal to, of course, D2, whatever that is. That is something I want to find out. And the new temperature being 293 Kelvin and the pressure being 110, 110 kPa. So what is my new density? Well, let me uh, put this into my calculator and see. So I have 64 divided by 22.4 times 273, okay? And then times 110, and then divided by the product of 101 times 293. Hopefully I did it right because it says my density is 2.9 grams per liter. Okay, so that is my new density when I decided to go from STP to 20 degrees Celsius and 110 kPa. So it's pretty neat, pretty neat. So all the other questions that you see right here can be done the same way. You know, some questions are obviously asking you for other variables, but the change in ideal gas can also, of course, be applied here to, you know, regarding density. And yeah, you know, we, we did a, quite a bit of review questions today, and hopefully you guys are good with that. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.